welcome everyone. Today we have a new Zenithon Zero gadget guide and also summoning video. Now looking behind me, we'll look into some of the rates and also method of getting your limited banner Astron characters and also limited banner weapons. And this is definitely one of the luckiest pool I have seen. So we'll be going through a lot of information that is shared on Reddit and also a lot of notes I have collected for you guys. And yes, I wrote four pages of different notes with probabilities, method, and different tips and all of so different probabilities again, and also different strategies, everything related to getting your limited banner S rank character and also even getting your weapon and what are the method and also options. In order to make things a little easier, I even made a summarized section for each of the part. There's a two London and read summarized section to teach you guys how many summons are you getting each of the patch with free to play, how many would you get with a monthly card, and also how many would you get with a battle pass. So there is a lot of information I have collected I want to share with you guys to help you guys have the best chance of getting your limited banner S rank character and maybe weapon and also plan ahead for each of the patch and this will help you to have a better experience in getting everything you wanted in the game. Now, because this video contains a lot of notes and also additional information and also additional information together with reads probability, incomes for free to play currencies in each of the patch with excels and also previous videos, I would recommend you guys to use the timestamps and also the links below to see everything that's mentioned and also everything that is showed over here. So firstly, let's come over to some of the interesting posts with the latest Sprinter's banner. And this is from Affection Mate. And basically, a lot of players were posting their lucky draws and also summons as they going for Burness. And some of them even went for Burness weapon. You can see he was extremely lucky getting double Burness and also double weapon. And I have been sent by some of our viewers to have a look at this particular Reddit post. And this one is from Spring 5th who actually made uh, some good summaries in terms of an Excel calculation and also dynamic values, which teach you guys and also help you guys to understand how many summons would you get every patch and how would you want to plan accordingly based on how many summons you get. Coming from the monthly card and also buying the battle pass and what is the best value for those things. So what I wanted to do is I want to combine everything into this particular video. So let's go through the first part. I will show you guys my account and before I do anything, I'll just show you guys that yes, I am trying to run my account as free to play as I can. And just to show you guys what I want to do is, so let's go over here. So this is coming a free to play kind of low spending kind of concept. I want to show you guys that I haven't purchased any of the double bonuses as you can see over here. I have only purchased the monthly card and at the moment I have not purchased the battle pass. So those are my current situation for my account. I try to stay free to play as much as I can. You can see the battle pass is not purchased. So this way I can help you guys to make guys and also videos, which will encourage you guys to do low spending or free to play and get the most resource. Now, personally on my account, I have just found Caesar right before the, I guess the banner expired. And I was lucky enough to get her limited banner weapon. This is a big factor. A lot of us who play the game since the launch of the game, you might have a number of limited banner characters like me over here. And I have been you know, spending a lot of time grinding for those free to play currencies. And I do not have the limited banner weapon. I'm using all the standard banner weapons and also purple weapons for those characters. So the bigger question is, when should you start summoning for limited banner character and their weapon? And also how should you do this in this particular video? So now that you saw that my account is mostly free to play or low spending with monthly card, I did buy the battle pass though once. And here you can see what I have gotten with those characters. I rewrote my account until I get an S rank character. So I keep making new account until I get Lycan or anything on the start of the first 10 free pools. And I was able to get Lycan. And this means on my next 80 summon, I got Ellen, but my luck went down the hill. I got Zuvian after 154 summons and I missed it the 50-50 on Soldier 11. After that, I got Qing Yi on 153 summons, missing the 50-50 on Necromancer. I tried to summon for Jam, but I skipped for her after 20 summons and then I really commit to summon for Caesar on the next 130 summons. Again guys, I missed the 50-50 again on Lycan. So this particular account you just saw missed every 50-50. But even with this, I was still a little lucky to get Caesar's weapon, which I think is a very, very big change for me because this allows me to save a lot more currency. 
So looking at those stats, how would this help you guys to understand how should you summon and what's the best thing for you? Well, the first thing is you should understand how much of the free to play polychromes you can get on each patch. So over here, I usually make a um, monthly or patch related video about how many free to play polychromes you can get in each of the patch. And this is all summarized over here. You can see how many limited banner summons and how many, you know, standard banner summons and also the value of the polychromes in terms of everything combined. And we do have a video to explain this if you haven't seen the video. So by my calculations and also estimations, in each of the patch, depending on the events and also everything related, you can get around 100 to 120 limited banner summons if you're not paying any money in the game. So you're completely free to play. There is also the recycling factor, which is around 8%. So as you're summoning for characters, what's going to happen is you're going to receive residual signals. And I have been using residual signals to buy those limited banner summons. And notice here I can buy two of them more, right? So those residual signals is pretty much an 8% refunding factor for the summons you get. So this is why I can say comfortably around each of the patch, you can get around 115 to 120 summons after you spend everything in the residual shop. Now, for those of you that played Genshin Impact or Honka Star Rail, you can see a similar pattern. The developers purposely made in each of the patch, the freebies you get can get around 120 summons, but you are just a little short on the 150 summons. So next thing is I made a calculation to show you guys if you were to buy a Monty card, not encourage you to buy the Monty card, but it is by far the best value for any purchase in the game. For 42 days of the patch, you will be getting 4,200 polychromes. So this is assuming you're buying monthly card every month, which costs $5 a month, which can be a lot of money if you don't have much pocket money. So this is also summarized over here by our friend. So let me show you the data. So he also made a small summary, which I thought would be very informative. And this is coming from a Reddit poster from the community with Spring 5th. So basically this particular Excel shows you the value and also efficiency in paying money in the game. And the monthly cut has nine times efficiency compared to the other ones, which only have one or maybe two, maximum a three with a battle pass. So if you're planning to purchase anything, the monthly cut is the best for value. Second to that, the recommended purchase after the monthly cut, if you still want to spend money, is going to be the battle pass, which will give you around 780 polychromes and also four limited banner summons which comes together in nine limited mana summons and also about five standard mana summons. So here's a quick summary of the first part, and let me explain to you why this is important. So the two landed and read version, basically you have three options for most of the free to play or low spending players. The first option is to not spend money in the game, get around 120 summons if you do everything in the game and I'll be posting additional promo codes and also additional events that is hidden that is available for you guys to get more freebies in the future. If you are planning to pay, this is how much you get with a monthly card. This is how much you get with a monthly card and a battle pass. So notice that this 154155 number looks very familiar, right? So we're going to highlight this. And this is the first part you want to understand for the Gacha games with ZZZ. So notice majority of the time my summons are around 154, 153. So the developers has purposely made it this way so that in each of the patch, if you're extremely unlucky like me, if you have bought the battle pass and also money card, you just get enough to get your limited banner character. And this is a big factor for you to understand. So the first part of the summary is that if you are saving for free to play, you might not even get one character you wanted in a patch if you're extremely unlucky. The game is actually designed in a hidden and also very evil way that unless you spend the minimal amount of money, you might not even get the 155 summons you needed to get one of the new characters that becomes available in the patch. Now I know this might not be a good news, but this is how the game developers make a lot of money. And come over to the second part. This is how we're going to go through the summoning techniques and also method you can beat this system, or I guess to understand the system. Now, during this time, I really do recommend you watching this video as it explains all the soft pity, the rays, everything related to the game. I have written a lot of notes in the past for that particular video. You can see there's a tons of notes about summonings that's related. And if you don't know about the soft pity, everything related to gacha games like ZZZ and also Genshin Impact, I do recommend reading this a little bit. 
So here's the summarized version. I always recommend players to use single summons because this is always the best. After getting your S rank character, you can stop there and you can save your future summons for the new A rank characters that comes into the game. You can also save those additional summons, which you don't waste because you're doing single summons. You waste a little bit of summons when you do multi summons because it gets over summoned in the pool. The additional spare summons you have can now be used for weapon summoning, which I explain why you want to do weapon summonings after one to two patch of playing the game. Now, if you have seen my stream and also the way I play, usually I get a little lazy. I do single summons for one to 20, and then I do multi summons from 21 to 70, and then I do single summons again, and those are my method. If you're wondering why we're using this method, this video explains more clearly, and here are the probability based on this particular method, which allows us to get a soft pity around 75 of the summon. Now over here, we also have some additional data coming from this Reddit post from Spring Thief, and I decided to take a screenshot so you can, guys can know what's happening. So basically, if you want to know how lucky you are compared to other players as you do your S rank summons, so most, on average, most of the players who are quite lucky will get the S rank character around 42 summons and 50% of the character that plays the game will get the S rank character around 72 summons. And you can see those are the values of getting one S rank character. The most unlucky player in the game will get their S rank character around 89 summons. But this is not talking about the 50-50. This is just how many summons you need before getting an S rank character. And in case you want to compare your luck, usually I'm around the 79 and also 80. So I'm pretty unlucky even when I'm summoning. And sometimes I get lucky, I get around 77. And most of the time I take 75 summons to get one S rank character. Now that we talk about this summoning technique, coming back to what we mentioned earlier. So it seems to me that most of the time, if you're very unlucky like me, the bottom line is I can get one limited banner character per patch, but there's two new characters, right? So this means I have to skip one character. And this is what I did. So here, notice after getting Caesar, I have not summoned anything on the Burness banner or her weapon because I have prepared and also planned to skip Burness and to plan for the future characters. So if you're extremely unlucky like me and you have not been winning your 50-50, you should be considering skipping one limited banner character per patch. And this is very important for you to understand to plan for future characters. Now, the second option is to consider to go for both of the limited banner character and also limited banner weapon. So this is a little advanced, but I'm sure most of you have played the game for a while now. So the second thing you want to consider is when should you be summoning for the limited banner character's weapon? So let's say if you're going for Bernays, and after getting Bernays, you might want to go for her weapon, right? So just like our Reddit post over here, after he went for Bernays, he went for the weapon. So this is what I did in the game as well. After I have gotten Caesar, I did try to go for Caesar's weapon. So when should you be doing this and how effectively can you do this? Well, the first thing you should understand is how much does the limited banner weapon empower or make your character stronger? By calculations for most of the MiHoYu games, this makes the character around 25 to 45% stronger. So notice that this doesn't make the character super broken or super strong but there is an empowerment which makes the character stronger in damage or maybe buffs the whole team or maybe provide more barriers like Caesar over here. And this weapon will make the character around 25 to 45% stronger. So this also means usually it's always better to go for S rank character instead of going for the weapon if you don't have the resource because the weapon only makes you around 45% stronger. But getting a new character means you can go for a new team and also try new different compositions and also new playstyle. So the next question is, do you have enough characters to make for two teams for all the content in the game before you summon for the limited mana weapon? Usually with the S rank characters, and you need two teams, right? So you can see that I have saved enough S rank characters like Lycan, enough S rank characters to make two teams. I'll be using Sokaku or maybe Nakua as a supporting characters. So I definitely have enough characters for two teams. And knowing that I have enough characters for two teams, which took me about two patches to accumulate those characters, I can now look for the weapons. Now, usually, Again, you want to have enough new agents before you go for limited banner weapons. 
and this is very important because I only start to summon for weapons after I start to get Caesar and I plan to skip for Brindis. So this means I am skipping characters in exchange for the weapon. Now finally, whether you want to go for limited by one weapon is depending on your luck before and also on the 50-50. So let's say if you're summoning for characters and you get your first S rank character around 72 or 79 summons. And if that character turns out to be the right character, well, you're lucky, right? You only spend around 79 summons instead of me spending around 153. But if you're unlucky like me and you have to lose the 50-50 to get your character, then that means you are likely not going to have enough to summon for the weapon. So if you're lucky to get the 50-50 means that you can go for the weapon. And this means you can get the weapon pretty quickly. Because weapons actually have 1% drop rate compared to the characters, which is at 0.6%, you are expecting to use around 60 to 70 summons to get your weapon. And most of the time, because it's a 75-25 ratio, you actually have a really good chance of getting both characters and also weapon if you do win your 50-50 in a patch. Now, the second alternative is for you to consider whether you want to go for limited banner character after losing the 50-50, which means you probably took 130 to 150 summons. During this time, I would again advise you guys to consider that you might not have enough to get the weapon banner pity, which will take around 60 to 70 summons. And this is actually not good because until you summon for the next weapon again, those accumulation of the soft pity will not be useful for you. And this might mean that you will be losing out on the future S rank characters. So if we come over to the Reddit post and the guides over here, our friend here did predict some of the future characters. You know, we know Light and also Yanagi is coming and likely Minabi and also more characters may be coming in the future. So this is when you want to plan accordingly. Are you willing to skip at least one to two characters for the future banner to summon for the weapon? And if that is okay with you, you can still summon for the limited banner weapon. But if you're not comfortable with missing out on characters, I do not recommend summoning for weapons if it took you around 130 to 150 summons to get your S rank character. And in terms of my personal example, this is what I did. So after it took me around 150 summons, 153 summons to get Zhu Yuan and Qing Yi. I did not go for the limited banner weapon. I only went for the Caesar limited banner weapon after knowing that I will skip burners and maybe even possible lighter. So this way I have enough summons to save for the future summons and I can afford to go for limited banner weapons. Now, finally, we do have a two London and rigged version for the second part as well. So basically, you want to do single summons. And after you have owned enough characters, this is when you want to summon for characters and weapons for the future. It is always good to summon for characters and weapons if you win the 50-50. If you lose the 50-50, you can still do this by knowing that you likely you might have to skip one to two new characters for the upcoming patch. And here, what I recommend is always use something like Excel or Summary to tell you how much future summons for this patch you can still get. And I'll be making those videos for you guys for patch 1.3. So this way you can plan accordingly. Now, before we finish the video, I do want to refer back to Spring 5th's particular Excel, which he made a quite interesting decision maker. So you know how we look at characters and we do have Excel sometimes. We look at the future characters. We look at, you know, I do a lot of character ranking and also character overview and which character is good for what, right? So he has some interesting numbers over here, which he wants to quantify how much weighting and also appeal of the character can be. If you think the character will be useful for your team, you can give them five rankings. But if you don't think it's useful, you can give them one ranking. Notice how the results and the data will change. So this is something that you can play around yourself and also look into to rank the characters depending on your own account and to help you make the decision whether you want to summon for this character. And here even have the appealingness. So how cute and also how sexy or maybe how attractive the character is and also how important it is the character for you. And depending on your ranking, this should help you to determine whether you want to skip this character or summon for this character for the future banners. Now, I know this is quite a long video and usually I don't want to make a long video like this, but I try to combine everything I know to share you guys with much information as I can. 
So if you do have any questions, guys, leave me in the comments below. Let me know what questions you have. And if you like this particular type of videos, I'll try to make one as we update and as we progress to the future patches. Maybe with patch 2.0, things will be a little different. And I'll make a video to update on this with different rates and also method to get the characters and also weapons you wanted for the game. Now, similar to all of the videos, if you want to follow the notes, those will be available in the links below. And if you find my videos helpful and you want to see more future videos for the ZZZ and also other games to come, make sure you subscribe to the channel and keep the notification on for the latest content.